It's like the other trap, except more spikier. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This week, I am going to continue on my basic trap series, except this week, I'm doing something a little bit more interesting than just the basic pit trap. I'm gonna tackle what is probably the most iconic dungeon trap of all time, and that's the spike pit. Well, I mean, spikes of all varieties are probably the most iconic, but specifically the spike pit. I'm going to take the basic pit trap that I made last week and add some friggin' cool spikes to it. And I think you can get a lot of mileage out of this trap because it's something that can be used as a trap to be sprung or just as terrain in the battle, whatever. I recommend making a whole bunch of these and you can come up with some cool layouts using them. So enough jibber jabbering. Let's go over to the table and let's build. So I'm gonna start with the same little Formica square that I used on the basic pit trap and obviously whatever basing material you've decided to use for your traps, you're just gonna use the same on these ones. And for the spikes, I'm gonna use these plastic arrow toothpicks. They, I guess, you know, are meant for sandwiches or whatever, put a pickle on them. You can get them on Amazon. You can get like 10,000 of them for under $10. And they have a really excellent little arrow sculpt that has a nice arrowhead and is fluted. Like it has a couple lines that, you know, it, it's, it's not just a smooth toothpick. So it's got a nice detail. Thanks again, Andrew. Andrew from uh, the channel Quasi's Bell Tower sent me some of these because he bought 10,000 of them and uh, didn't need that many. So he sent some out to a couple of us other YouTubers and they've come in really handy for a couple projects. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick those up on Amazon so you don't have to try to find them. Anyway, we are going to do a spike pit trap. I need to attach some spikes to this board. And basically what I've done is I've just taken these skewers and, you know, a pair of pliers with a cutter and cut a bunch of them to various short lengths, you know, ranging in and around half an inch. They don't all have to be the same. Some variation will actually look cool. I'm going to give this kind of water treatment with the five minute epoxy, just like the basic pit trap, but I, I need this stuff in place first. The reason for that is that that epoxy, it sets very fast, but before it's set, these don't tend to want to like stay upright in them and you can't hold them while it sets and do all of them because it'll all be cured. That was my initial way of trying to build these. It didn't work out. So I realized I need to attach these first, spray paint the thing and uh, paint out the spikes before the water effects. And the simplest way to do that is just with hot glue. I'm going to start from the middle and work my way out so that it is, you know, not awkward to do. I'm also going to keep these spaced out enough that I will later be able to go in with a popsicle stick and smear that epoxy for the water effect. So that's something to keep in mind as well. It doesn't take a lot of hot glue to hold these, just a small dab. You don't want it to be too big of a glob that's gonna end up being thicker than the, the layer of epoxy is. Otherwise, it'll look really kind of strange, you're in the end gonna want this to look like these spikes are a lot longer and extending up through the water. So go through and just start attaching all your spikes. There, and I think I am happy with this. So I'm just gonna go to the basement and spray paint this out in a gray primer and I then can start painting it. So now that I've got this bad boy spray painted out, uh, I can start painting the spikes. And there's two reasons that I chose gray over black for priming. One is that again, like the basic trap, 
the water that I put on this is going to be somewhat translucent and I want any you know visible surface underneath showing through to read like stone although to be fair this one I might make it look like it's deeper so you might not see anything shining through but the other thing is that these spikes since I'm painting them in this gunmetal gray this metallic gray it's going to be a lot less effort and possibly one less coat if I just have these primed out first in gray so that's something to keep in mind so I'm just going to go ahead here and paint these spikes out in the gunmetal and you'll notice that I have this on a little holder I just, it's just a pill bottle with sand in it for some weight and I actually hot glued this right to it so that when I get to the epoxy stage you know where I'm going to be putting pressure over this whole thing it doesn't um, you know move around and bend on me and it'll make it a little bit easier to work with this gray primer is really effective here um, to the point where it's almost hard to tell where I have and haven't painted. So I'm definitely only going to need one coat of this gunmetal on the spikes. And that's it. It's done incredibly easy and fast. The hardest part actually is just making sure you don't miss something and making sure you don't have any big globs of paint because you're painting such a small uh, surface so quickly it's easy to get a glob of paint that you don't actually want to be there so just doing a once over to wipe off any excess now i'm thinking i'd actually like to add a little bit of rust to these so to make rust i take some burnt sienna and a little bit of orange and i'm going to make a little bit of a rust color here you want far more of the burnt sienna than the orange but having a bit of that orange in there makes it look a little bit more like rust in the real world i'm going to get a different softer brush here and i'm going to be very sparing with this at first because i don't want to overdo it and i'm basically just going to dab this on the high points it's kind of a little bit like a dry brush except that i'm kind of just dabbing it on rather than aggressively going over the edges kind of stippling it i guess would be the correct term here oh, i got one spike here where the hot glues come a little loose but i'm not worried about that because once the epoxy is on here it's going to be holding all of these in permanently that hot glue is, is essentially just there to hold these in place while you paint them and do the epoxy so now time for the water effects same as last time i'm going to use this dollar store five minute epoxy and i'm going to mix in a tiny bit of green paint and see how that looks possibly add some brown i know that this is actually going to require more epoxy than i expect so i'm using a fair amount here and I'm going to mix this up a bit before adding the paint and this time last time I did this I dropped right into the paint and I quickly got too much so let's see tiny little dab a dab will do and I think I can get away with a bit more maybe a hint of brown you know what I think I'm being a little too cautious here can use more paint because I want this water to have quite a bit of depth to it I don't want it to just be a thin layer like on the basic pit trap so now here's the hard part trying to get this epoxy onto the tile in between all the spikes without just completely covering the spikes in the process it's okay if a little bit gets on them but I don't want too much I'm trying to pour this in Just kind of go in and spread it around. Okay, it's 
looking pretty good. And I'm gonna grab some moss to add a little bit of vines. This is that same kind of craft store lichen or lichen, whatever it's called, breaking it apart. And I'm just gonna drop some in, sort of sparingly, I think, on this one. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that is enough for this one. I don't wanna overdo it with vines. Gonna let this cure, and then we'll move in for the uh, close-up shots. Now that the epoxy is set, I'm looking at this thing, and I think I wanna do one more detail to it. These vines that I've added, I feel like they look way too dry and dead. So I actually wanna give them a wash, and I'm just gonna use this Citadel sepia shade and this will just kind of darken them up and Hopefully make them look a little bit more slimy and I think what I'll do uh, I will I'll do this off-camera later is, is once this wash is dried which will take a little bit of time I'm gonna spray the whole thing in you know my typical Minwax polyurethane, but I'm gonna use the the gloss variety and, and that'll ensure that these vines, one, are a little bit sealed and protected so they don't fall off, uh, but also it'll make them look nice and wet. There, I think that small little extra effort there is going to improve the overall look quite a bit. All right, that's it. There you have it guys. That is how you can make yourself some cool looking spike traps very quickly, very easily, cheap. Uh, of course, some of you are saying, hey, but what about spike traps that aren't a pit, the ones that just extend from the floor. I personally didn't make any like that because in my head, those are retractable traps that come and go and they don't need to be a static piece on the game board. But if you want to do that, it's really easy. You can just take your basic dungeon tiles, take the same arrow toothpick things and embed some in there and just swap out the tiles to your heart's desire. And speaking of material used in this video, if you want to get any of the tools and supplies that I used in this video or any of my other videos, you want to make sure it's the right stuff, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store, and that's where I link to all of the stuff that I use regularly and recommend so that you can ensure you're buying the right stuff. And more importantly for me, those are affiliate links and I get a small commission from each of those sales which help fund this channel. So it's a good way to support the channel without actually sending me any extra funds, just buy the stuff you would buy anyway. On the same note, most of my videos also have links in the description of the video for pertinent stuff for that particular tutorial. And on the note of supporting the channel, if you wanna help out uh, me and this channel in a big way and ensure that the videos keep coming regularly every Friday and that the quality continues to improve, the best way you can do that is by supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Those funds are monumentally important to keeping this channel afloat and going. I'm building what I think is a really great little resource community called The Fellowship. And that's where everyone who supports at the $5 a month level gets to hang out in a private Facebook group. We share ideas, we share our projects, we brainstorm, we come up with ideas for videos. And that's the way, the best, and becoming one of the only ways that you can reach out to me for help whenever People in that group ask a question of me, I go out of my way to answer it quickly because those are the people that are making all of this a reality. Uh, and actually, recently I've started doing some Facebook Live videos privately on that group to answer questions that are more involved than just a simple text response. It's beginning to have more secret, unaired, content on the channel and I would like that to continue further. So anyways, think about checking it out. It's a cool little group of people. 
wonderful place to hang out and it helps me out in a huge way. If you don't mind, take a moment, take a look at the Patreon, see what it's all about and consider pledging to the channel. Of course, if you found this video useful and I hope that you did, hit that like button, drop me a comment below and of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Until next week, guys, I hope you have traps that impale many PCs and you have a great game. Cheers, happy crafting, have a great weekend, guys.